We often speak of underdeveloped land areas, but rarely of the greatest undeveloped natural resource on the planet, the world's oceans. Although humans used the oceans of the world for thousands of years as a source of food and transportation, we are only now beginning to recognize the enormous potential and diversity of this relatively untapped resource. The oceans offer an almost limitless environment for food, energy production, minerals, pharmaceuticals, and much more. If intelligently managed, the oceans will easily supply more than enough resources to feed the world's hungry. To fully utilize this bountiful wellspring of resource, the future may embrace the development of large marine structures designed to explore the relatively untapped riches of the world's oceans. Ultimately, the development of these ocean communities will greatly relieve the land-based population pressures and be designed to support and sustain the environment of the land and sea. The population of such cities can vary from several hundred to many thousands and be located throughout the world. These would all be managed and operated by automated systems and be part of the international communications networking system. Many of these cities can serve as universities and research centers where students from all nations of the world would study marine sciences and management. They will also serve as monitoring stations of ocean currents, weather patterns, marine ecology, pollution control and management, and geology. In addition, robotic submersibles will be used in deep ocean exploration. The oceans are, after all, essential to our survival and a critical part of the Earth's carrying capacity. Other sea platforms will be used as rocket launching systems for space exploration. Space vehicles launched at the equator save a great deal of energy because the equator is the fastest moving portion of the Earth. Locating launch sites there takes full advantage of the Earth's rotation for additional thrust. Still, many other areas of the oceans will remain largely untouched. These are treasures in themselves and need never be turned over to technological development or exploitation. Their reclamation, enhancement and preservation should be a priority for global conservation. In the new spirit of world cooperation, some of these areas will be set aside as international marine parks for the education and enjoyment of all. Cities of the sea will offer a new and fascinating lifestyle for millions of inhabitants. Massive ocean structures would be both above and beneath the sea. In some of these underwater parks, visitors will observe the great underwater protected reefs of the world. Through huge undersea windows, one will be able to view the wonders of this environment, the world's greatest aquarium right in their living rooms. From a computerized chair, people can communicate with dolphins and other forms of marine life. These cities in the sea will also provide far more amenities than are available on luxury cruise ships of today. 
but all of this without a price tag. Cities in the Sea will be among the greatest engineering achievements of the 21st century. One of the most efficient designs would be of circular configuration, multi-storied and fabricated of pre-stressed concrete, with carbon fiber reinforcements and transparent materials of super strength. Some may be floating, while others could be built on pilings with flotation barriers which prevent the wind and heavy seas from damaging these structures. In deeper waters, the floating platforms would be anchored to the seabed. Many of these cities can be constructed in technically developed countries and towed to their destination in sections or as complete operating systems, similar to the way oil platforms are transported to their destination today. Other configurations can be designed as variable composite structures, assembled on site and modified to serve many different functions. They can also be disassembled and relocated if required. They would vary in size depending on their function and can be as large as half a mile in diameter with flexible interconnections. Other above surface structures anchored to the seabed may serve as efficient bases for mining operations. These dome-shaped structures could be totally automated and their flotation levels adjusted by flooding or emptying their buoyancy chambers. They may be constructed on land and towed to their destination where they would be submerged and anchored in place. All marine development must be in full accord with the total carrying capacity of the ocean environment. Before initiating any of these major projects, it is imperative to take into account the possible negative impact on the entire hydrosphere, the rivers, estuaries, lakes and oceans. On these and other floating cities or platforms, which could ultimately number in the thousands, powerful wind turbines would capture the ocean breezes. Solar and wind power generators will be located on most of the upper decks. Cold water from the depths of the ocean can also be pumped up for various uses, such as the conversion of this heat differential into electrical energy. This process would provide a continuous supply of electricity far in excess of the city's needs. Aircraft, sea craft and submersibles will have easy access to these spectacular structural achievements. Sea cities will be equipped with loading and docking facilities for vessels. Huge ships serving as processing plants transport passengers and freight to the cities in the sea. The upper deck would be equipped with a landing area for helicopters or VTOL aircraft. Computerized control units will facilitate vertical, horizontal and radial travel within these structures. Mariculture, or the planned cultivation of marine crops, and fish farming communities can be designed to support more than one type of marine life. Many of these communities would maintain a balance of species 
in a mutually supporting symbiotic relationship and emulate natural conditions as near as possible. A wide variety of aquatic plants would also be cultivated in multiple layers and suspended by cables in underwater fields adjacent to these cities. In some instances, the tops can be harvested automatically, leaving the roots and the lower third of the plant to grow new crops without replanting. These floating ocean platforms would also be equipped with solar-operated desalinization plants, which extract fresh water for hydroponics farming and other uses. Upwelling can also be harnessed to extract deep-sea nutrients to supply ocean farming. Of course, any attempt at aquaculture or mariculture must be an integral part of international ocean management systems. Every precaution must be taken to avoid disrupting the very spawning grounds that for countless centuries have sustained the human race. A coordinated system of cities in the sea can easily supply all the nations of the world with abundant resources along with an exciting and meaningful lifestyle. But to accomplish a project of this magnitude, they will operate at their best if they are shared by the entire global community. Eventually, mineral wealth of the oceans and resources of the world must be shared by all of the nations as the common heritage of humankind. If we fail to adopt these measures, the rapid exploitation and deterioration of the ocean's resources may not be reversible.